Good morning, America. Thanks for joining us here on the Andy Kirkendall Show, where Andy interviews actors, writers, filmmakers, athletes, musicians, songwriters, and more, and asks them, what do you do and why do you do it? So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and enjoy the show. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Moments. Today's guest is a author, speaker, and coach. It's my privilege to bring uh, Brenda Cox Harkins to Morning Moments. Welcome, Brenda. Hey, good to be here, Andy. Uh, thank you for joining me today. And so let me ask you the question I ask everybody. What do you do and why do you do it? What do I do, first of all? Okay, well, author, speaker, coach, that says a little bit, but how I do all of that, what the purpose for all of that, I like to help people discover three things. I really like to help people discover their their purpose, power, and potential, but also that of other people. And so um, th really there's some scriptures that are key to, to all of that for me. People's purpose, there's, you know, Ephesians 2.10, which talks about how we, all of us, are God's masterpiece. One of the uh, translations says we're his poetry. I like that. Um, and we were created for good works that he designed before we were ever born. And so that purpose piece for people to discover that um, themselves and to come alive with this is why I'm here. Uh, I love to to help be a part of that. And so in my writing and um, coaching and speaking all of that, that that's a big piece of it is helping people discover what their purpose is. And then uh, the power part, uh, I think really that you know, how we're all a part of the body and there's all the different members of the body. I think it's first Corinthians 12 that talks about, you know, like when an, an ear wouldn't say, I'm not a part of the body just because I'm not an eye, you know, and yet we do that. I mean, like we do that. We're like, oh, I'm only this. So I must not be that. And so to help people understand that the, this, that you are, is where the power of the Lord wants to flow through to have you be all that he made you to be. And so there's there's a lot of power in just aligning with whatever that part of the body is. You know, and some people are like, yeah, but those people are out front and people see them and I'm just back here. And I always think of the liver in the, in the physical body, you know, because it's like, what does the liver do? Like, does nobody sees the liver? It sounds kind of gross. It, but what but it removes the toxins from our body and without it we would die and so those parts of the body just to recognize who you are and there's nothing insignificant there's power in aligning with that and so well, let's see that's purpose and power so the potential in people oh First Corinthians 2, 9, you know eye has not seen ear has not heard mind has not even imagined all of the things that God's prepared for those who love him. And so um, truly the potential that he has for us to reach all the places that he intends for us to reach, it's beyond our imagination. You think of like, I can see a lot of things and I can hear a lot of things and I can think a lot of things, but to think that it's even far beyond that, that God has for us it just lights me up to be able to help people um, discover those things. So that that's what I do. You know, I heard someone say that if you don't know what your purpose is, find your passion, because somewhere wrapped up in your purpose is usually your passion. Uh, it's yes. You know, if you can go back, as a matter of fact, that's how I found my purpose. I went back as far as I could in my memory. And I started writing down all of the things that made my heart beat fast, all of the things that even if they seemed insignificant, if it was a memory that I that just felt really good, I wrote it down and I started seeing a thread through all of it. That was a common thread from the time I was six years old all the way up. So, yes, 
your passion helps you lead your find your purpose. You talk. You're talking about the bo- our the body, and uh, you, it, when you said liver, the the nurse in me kicked in <laughs> with the anatomy and physiology of of the liver. That's where the nutrients are stored. That's where mm. the vitamins are stored, and that's taken out. And so when people think I'm in, I'm just a big blob of of liver. That could be your purpose is to store those good things to 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 give to the body of Christ when needed, the glucocons and the vitamins and the enzymes when needed. I had somebody say one time, I'm just the big toe of the body of Christ. But without the big toe, we have no balance. There is no balance. That's so, right. And so I yeah. says, yes, everybody's got a purpose, a plan, a future, and a hope. And until we find that, it's hard to get the power and the potential from us until we find our purpose. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Oh, great. How, how do you go about bringing that out of people? Oh, different ways. It's through the coaching and it's it's even through the speaking, sometimes in big groups that will go through exercises that help that. But I tell you what, I use what the Lord used for me more than anything. I have people go back as far as they can in their memory and just think about can I give you an example real quick? So when, okay. So when I was a little girl, I used to play, that is my favorite thing to play. I was a princess and I sat on this throne and these big doors would fly open and people from the village would pour in and they would come and they would tell me all of the injustices that were happening. And I would send out the knights to go get the bad guys and throw them in the dungeon. Like, you know, that was, that was what I, I mean, I loved playing that. It wasn't like, oh, I'm the princess. I'm married to the prince. I have all these pretty dresses. I live in a palace. Although that might've been, that wasn't what lit me up. What lit me up was to right the wrongs and to, um, uh, yeah, to, to bring justice. And so that has been seeing that even as a little kid, uh, I saw themes of that all through my life. So I, that's one of the ways that people can begin to do that. Look back as far as you can. What did you love? What did you love when you were a kid and why did you love it? You know, when you said that I was going back and and to, to my life and at an early age, I discovered that I could make people laugh. And uh, the things that sent me to the principal's office uh, as a, <laughs> in school later became what I used to p- present the gospel and to bring people to to understand because my humor, and uh, it's because it, that was my passion. It's always been my passion to to help make people laugh and however I can. And God, God will say, I, not everybody can do that. You can because I have given you that passion. And that gift, now do something with it. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So I I love your why question. I'm thinking of something here that, you know, like, why do you do this? Obviously, it lights me up. That's one of the reasons why I love it. But um, I remember this was years ago. We, uh, my husband and I were in India with our two little kiddos and I'd never, I mean, I thought I had experienced crowds before. I had never experienced that. And I remember Mike telling me before we went, Brenda, we do not have enough money to save India. (laughs) Don't give money to these kids because you will be swarmed. And there, you know, and I was just thinking, oh, how do I not do that? I just don't know what to do. And so we were walking down the street and this course, you know, kids start coming up and, and, and I, I was just praying, I don't know what to do, Lord, I don't know what to do. I can't ignore these kids. And it was like, I just, that voice in his voice, that quiet voice, speak a blessing. And I started looking at each of those kids just right in the eye and just saying whatever came to me. You are so beautiful. You have a purpose. You haven't even begun to see how big it is yet. Do you know how much God loves you? Whatever I was saying. I was looking at each one of them and their little hands dropped. They forgot about asking money. And it was just the most beautiful thing to see how the affirmations the Lord has for us 
it meets a place in the heart that nothing else can. And, and so that's that, yeah, that's a huge part of why I do that. Now you, you've written some books and some, uh, some information about this as well, right? Yes, I have. Okay. So crossing over living your purpose on purpose. That was my first book uh, that I've just come out with the loud is not a language. It's going to be the first in a series. Next one will be loud is not a language for Christians, uh, and then marriages and then leaders. But, um, Yes, Loud is Not a Language is about helping us enter into those hard conversations that seem to be so difficult for our world to talk about right now. Uh, being able to converse with people that have completely different perspectives in a way that builds a trust bridge between you that's authentic and it shows respect and it leaves the door open for future conversations and for a greater impact. Ugh. Yeah, that's that's where the Lord has had me recently. And and with the great divide, and there is really a great divide that's taking place. Uh, how do we how do we get there? I'm so this is this is a information a book that's needed so much. How do we get to somebody that really cannot stand our politics, cannot stand our religion, cannot stand uh, our you know uh, our background, our you know? And there's so much so much to divide us. Uh, how do we tear those things down? And I'm so glad somebody's addressing that. Ah, uh, yes, I am. Uh, I'm hoping that it has widespread influence because I believe in it so much. I I know that a huge part of it is to have our heart stance right before we enter into those conversations. And I, I use the analogy of a chair, like pull up a chair, like you invite somebody into a conversation, you know, we want to, we want to have the courage, the humility, authenticity, integrity, and respect in place in our heart for that person in front of us before we ever enter into the conversation. And then when we do, what we do is a little bit counterintuitive because we want people to hear what we have to say. But what we do instead is we listen. Yeah. We ask them, tell me more about why you believe like you do. Where did that come from? How did, how did you get those convictions? And we listen, genuinely caring how they got there. And it starts to build a bridge of trust that leads to who knows where good that, places. Uh, share God's love. And if necessary, use words. Got it. Yep. And, and sometimes we just don't, we just don't listen. I know as a psychiatric nurse, uh, I, I realized that the importance of just listening and, and some, and I, I'm still trying to figure that out, but just to be able to stop and listen to people that's, People need to be heard. They want yeah. to be heard. Yeah. Yeah. And once you do that, like you said, those those walls are starting to drop, and people then will will uh, will then open up more to you if you just do that. Yes. Yes. Because they're not being judged. They're being genuinely cared about. Absolutely. It doesn't work if there's manipulation in it. No, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah. If it's genuine, it can be a beautiful relationship that is built between somebody who doesn't see anything eye to eye with you. Yeah. Because everybody's thinking you're, you're doing this for, there's an angle somewhere, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. So down below, you've been seeing the websites down below. You've been also seeing the books uh, so that you could get a hold a hold of and, and the the information that that's offered in their website. Please check that out. Uh, as we as we close this interview today, I'm going to ask my audience to do something that uh, you've heard me say for hundreds of interviews. I'm going to say it again. I, I want you as soon as this interview is over to pray for Brenda. I want you to earnestly pray that God would use her in the influence that she's God's given her to, to work in a great and mighty way. You see, Brenda is limited by your prayers. <laughs> you, you need to desperate. She needs to pray. You need to pray for her. She desperately needs your prayers folks. And you desperately need to practice. So pray that God would use her in a great and mighty way. I any closing thoughts that you have for us in the next couple of minutes there, uh, Brenda? Oh, I think that I would just say, um, 
for those people in, in the lives of anyone listening, if there's someone in your life that you're thinking of, wow, yeah, I really, we don't see eye to eye on anything and we have a really hard time talking. I would encourage you to pray for the Holy Spirit to help you have a greater measure of courage, humility, authenticity, integrity, and respect toward that person and then show you how to ask the right questions and listen with a genuine heart to understand them better, not to share who you are and your point better, but to hear them better. Yeah. And just watch what happens. What wonderful words of wisdom. That's, that's absolutely uh, fantastic. Uh, please pass this interview on to other people. There may be somebody that you've, you, you're thinking of as soon as you heard the interview and you think, you know, I think the Lord wants me to send that to them. You may need to post it on your Facebook page. You may need to send this YouTube uh, links to somebody else, but please do so. Keep coming back uh, and uh, may God richly bless you.